What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. Today, very special guest. You know, he really kicked this Community Voices thing off Juneteenth last year. A year later, we're with him again, again today. And now it's a federal holiday. So we want to welcome Tim J. Everybody clap it up. Oh, what's up, baby? How are you feeling? I'm amazing, man. It's great to talk to you again. Uh, congratulations on an, an incredible year of Community Voices. I've been watching all of them. You've been doing a great job with these interviews, and, and thanks for having me back. No, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. So, you know, this is almost like a recap in a sense, since it's literally been exactly a year. So talk to us about how the year has been and, you know, the great news this week with uh, Juneteenth becoming a federal holiday. You know, um, it's a long time coming. You know, uh, Kenya Barris on Blackish has been talking about Juneteenth for years. You know, I, I've known about Juneteenth for about 15 years. Um, and it's something like that a lot of us celebrate on the low. Yeah. And the fact that it's now a national holiday is beautiful because that now means that no matter who you are, black, white, uh, anybody in this country, you're, when you take this day off, you're going to have to say it out loud. You're going to have to say, oh, today's Juneteenth. And then there's going to be that question, well, what is Juneteenth? And I know there's a lot of different you know, policies and a lot of different education in this country, but hopefully it's going to lead to conversations and dialogue about why Juneteenth uh, it, it has become a federal holiday. And right. hopefully that dialogue will um, inform people of some of the things that have happened in this country so that we don't go back down that path. So I think um, it's, it's symbolism and a step in the right direction. Definitely, for sure. So talk about, you know, with Juneteenth being a federal holiday and there's like, you know, legislation in different states that prevent kids from learning about slavery and, you know, the country, you know, first and greatest sin. So talk about that contradiction as far as like you're kind of learning about it because it's a federal holiday. You're off from school because of it. But at the same time, there's like curriculums out there that don't teach it. Yeah, it's a challenge. You know, you, you can't know where you're going unless you know where you've been. And like you said, slavery is one of America's original sins. And in order for us to really move past it, it's important for us to, to learn from it, to yeah. learn from those mistakes that we made as a nation. And so this being a, a federal holiday, look, there's a lot of things that we want to see happen in this country, right? We want to see police reform. We want to see prison reform. We want to, you know, make sure that our voting rights aren't withheld. There, there are a lot of different things that we're fighting for, but this symbolism, I feel, is a step in the right direction. Because yeah. like I said, this now creates dialogue. You know, hopefully we won't get to the place where we're just throwing barbecues on this day. We're going to have to have real conversations about what's taking place so that we can move forward in the right direction. So why do you think that is as far as like, because for me, I feel like it's impossible to tell American history without speaking about slavery. So why do you think it is like these states would just kind of like not have kids learn about, you know, the country's like greatest sin versus like kind of skipping over and going right into, you know, more traditional like history? Look, you said it yourself, it's, it's our country's biggest sin. And the information has been withheld from us for years, right? It, this, this was never advantageous uh, to, for, for the system, for it to be put into the school system for us to learn, right? They wanted to keep this information away from us for years. And so there were, there were policies in place to, to withhold this from us. Now that some of this is getting broken apart, uh, now that, you know, um, uh, people are starting to, to, to shine a light on it. The information is slowly starting to come out. You know, I'm, I'm 38 years old and I had no idea uh, the history around Memorial Day, right? I, we were just all kind of celebrating Memorial Day this year in particular when, when I started to see all the posts that broke down the original Memorial Day and why I started, I was blown away, right? right. And, you know, I, I pride myself on going to a black college and knowing a lot about black history. And that was a that was a fact that I had no idea about, right? And so I, I think, you know, as, as we as we grow as a nation, 
uh, we're still a relatively young nation um, compared to other countries. I think, like you said, this this is our original sin. Slavery is 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 well. In addition to Native Americans, yeah. uh, slavery is 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 a is a sin that is is uh, is is deeply ingrained in American history, and it's going to take un- time to unravel that. And so, again, you know, it's um it's very disappointing that it's taken this long. But I'm very optimistic uh, in the collective consciousness of young people and, and the collective consciousness of where the country is headed. So that's yeah. definitely something positive to look forward to. Definitely. And lastly, for you, talk about uh, the work you've been doing with the Thurgood Marshall uh, Foundation. Yeah, man. So when I was in college, um, I went to a black college. I went to North Carolina a t State University. And when I was a sophomore in school, um, I was on academic probation. My, my grades weren't where they needed to be. Mm-hmm. And a teacher told me about the Thurgood Marshall College Fund. I applied and they they didn't just give me a scholarship, but they invested in me. They, um, you know, they, they had mentoring programs that really helped me turn my life around. Uh, so now I'm actually the national ambassador for the Thurgood Marshall College Fund. My job is to, you know, do a plethora of different things across the board. Uh, There are programs, not just to give scholarships to students, but um, internships, work placement programs for for high school students going into college. Like there are a ton of different programs. So I think it's an amazing organization and uh, I can't wait to work with them more in the future. Yeah, definitely, you know, uh, the community voices, we've been able to donate to all types of charities and foundations that, you know, support like the black and brown community. So we definitely want to, make a donation to Thurgood Marshall uh, Fund as well. So that way there could be another kid like Turner J in situation who we're giving the resources to, to, you know, come up and be in your position and be able to, you know, uh, create a, you know, a donation opportunity for this. Uh, for I love it. I love it. I love That's it. That. Man, you know, we're a big fan of yours over here, JD, in uh, Times Square. Well, not Times Square, stories in Times Square, JD and Finish Line. Um, you know, you started this for us, so we're like eternally grateful for you and for you to take the time out to do like a recap in a sense. Um, Dan, we can't thank you enough. Congratulations on an incredible year. Thank you so much for what you're doing uh, for the community and for 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 doing this program. And uh, thanks for all the speakers. I appreciate you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta show love where we can, so. I love it, man. Thank you, Omar.